According to the scripture here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, gives us a complete scenario. That Hello guys, so you're welcome back. My name is Bukumi. So Kali is gonna be explaining to us how the day of judgment is in Islam and how the world is going to come to an end. So let's watch guys. So it really means that after all this time and the people walk away from that grave, it's over. Hmm. What about that person in the grave? What's happening? Because you know and I know that death is almost like sleeping. Death is like sleeping. Your body is gone. Your body is dead. Your spirit is gone. But your consciousness is there. Yes, brothers and sisters, you and I are going to know when the people put us in that box and put us in the grave, we are going to know your spirit is gone. You can't shout. You can't call out. You can't say, don't leave me here. But you're going to be hearing and you're going to be seeing because that's a different kind of consciousness. But you can't move. And in that grave, this is when the real trauma is going to begin. Because there's a reason for humans to go inside the grave. If the creator wanted to, he could have caused us to live and then disappear into the, into the atmosphere. But he didn't. He caused us to go into another womb called the tomb. You started out in the womb of your mother and you wind up in the womb of the earth called the tomb. From the womb to the tomb. This is the whole trip. And this is what you have to think about. That grave is going to be a place of drama and trauma. A place where you're going to be questioned before you're resurrected. And brothers and sisters, do you think that human beings that have the ability, human beings that have the ability to take a piece of earth, dig it up, irrigate it, put down seeds, plant corn, whatever the case might be. The corn comes up, they harvest the corn, then after that what happens? They cut it down, dig it up again, put new seeds in there, and what happens after that? Comes back up again. What happens in the winter? All the leaves fall off the trees and the earth goes dead. And what happens in the springtime? The water comes, generates the earth again, germinates all over again, new grass, new leaves, new flowers, new fruits. So Allah says, and a sign for them is the dead earth. After that, we give it life. And then you eat the fruits from that. So Allah says, the one who gave you life in the beginning, is he not able to give you life all over again in order to judge you? Yes, certainly. You may want to deny it because you don't want to be judged. But you will be judged. And this is what we want to talk about now. According to the scripture here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, gives us a complete scenario. That death is a fact. Nobody here can deny it. Now if there's somebody here that's got a problem or a philosophy that they differ with me about death, that they ain't, they're not going to die, they're not included in that, I want you to raise your hand so you can come up here and give us this theory. Okay, that means we're all on the same page. Let's continue. Now, death is a fact. Going inside the grave is a fact. If you don't want to agree about what's going to happen in the grave, let's move past that. But the Creator says that after the grave, so certainly we will resurrect you. Mm. 
and the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, he gave us a beautiful scenario. He said that after the Almighty destroys this earth as he, as he created it in the beginning, by his word, he will destroy it. Now we know that the human beings have been able to create a weapon which is called a solar destructive weapon. It means that they have a weapon now that can emit a sound that can destroy a mountain. We already know that they have been able to design a weapon that can create and harness a laser beam that can create holes through the mountains with a laser beam. Now this is what humans have been able to do. The creator, he says, that on the day of judgment, before that judgment, he will destroy the entire world. Now the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, gives us a beautiful scenario. He says, it will happen in this order. There will be the sound of a trumpet. Not the trumpet of Louis Armstrong, not the trumpet of John Coltrane, not the trumpet of Miles Davis, not that trumpet, another trumpet, another horn, blown by an angel with a sound that when it comes out, the first blast would destroy all living creatures at once. The sound of that trumpet will cause the human beings to fall into a swoon, almost like they're drunk, but they won't be drunk. There will be trauma, confusion. Mothers will abort. And the opening of the graves. And everyone that went into a grave from the day that, they, that this earth was created, from the first human beings to the last, mm. the graves will be opened up and the human beings will come out of the grave as if they were mushrooms. Mm. The prophet said that Allah will send on that day after he destroys the earth, after he removed the sky, he will then send clouds, new clouds. And those clouds will have inside of them sperm. And when those clouds open up and drop that sperm, that sperm will hit the earth. And each one of us, the sperm from our father, the same sperm with the same DNA from our father, will come from that cloud and hit the ground and you and I will come out of that ground like mushrooms. All the way back, God says, to the fingertips. That means with the same fingerprints and the same DNA. The only thing on that day, no one will be able to speak. Wouldn't that be beautiful? No one, no one will cry, no one will complain, no one will lie, no one will exaggerate, no one will blame the other one, because no one will speak. The prophet then said, peace and blessing be upon him, that the human beings will then be gathered on a huge white plane, stretched out. All the human beings from the first to the last, from Adam, Islam, <coughs> from the prophet Adam, first man, all the way to the last. And he said they will be on that day barefoot and naked. No fancy clothes that day. No fancy shoes. No fancy clothes. 
nothing to distinguish them and say what their class or their rank would be that day. So his wife Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Oh Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, won't the people be embarrassed? He said, No, Aisha, they will not be embarrassed. They will be so full of trauma that day that nobody will look to the left or the right. They will all be only concerned about themselves. And then the judgment will begin and the scales will be set up. The same scales, scales like the scales that you see inside the supermarkets when they weigh bananas and fruit. Same kind of scales. Only this day, it will not be bananas and fruit. It will be deeds. Because that's all we have as human beings to offer that day. Deeds. That's the whole purpose of our life. To do deeds. To perform. See what the tongue says. See what the private parts do. See what the hands do. See where the legs and the feet, where they go to. See what the mind, see what the eyes see. See what the mind feels and thinks. See what the heart, what kind of emotions it holds. And what's the final result? On that day, the deeds will be laid out. And the people will be sorted out into groups. And on that day, everybody will be receiving their tickets and their visa to their final destination. You know what a ticket and a visa is. A ticket is going to take you somewhere and the visa is the permission. Dear brothers and sisters, seekers after truth, if you doubt that this is your end and my end, let me remind you and remind myself that this life is very short. The Prophet ﷺ said, the human beings will be resurrected all together. Men, women, jinn, shaitanin, shayateen, beads and birds, birds and beasts. He said, they will be naked, uncircumcised and barefooted. They will be hungry and their stomachs burning. The sun will be over their heads about the distance of a mile. Now can you imagine that? I mean, right now, the sun is 93 million miles away from the earth. And you know how hot it gets some places. Can you imagine the earth being about a mile from the sun? They will have hot wind blowing in their faces because the doors of hell will be opened up. Now, if anybody's getting a little restless here and you think you need a, one of them little bags that they give you on the plane or you need, a, uh, you need some uh, Panadol or something to hold you down, then let us know. Because I know most of us, we didn't think about this scenario and I'm telling you again, this is not a movie. I'm not trying to get no Oscar up here. This is scripture giving you the chance to consider. They will sweat until their sweat will produce rivers up to their knees, their waist, their shoulders, and some people up to their noses in their own sweat. They will cry tears until the tears create a flood, but it won't matter. And when they cannot cry anymore, they will then cry blood. They will be shouting, screaming like animals, making sounds like animals being slaughtered. But Allah will not listen to them because this is a day when which was announced to them. They will have their flesh burned from the hellfire and it will smell like rotten corpse. And they will ask, they will see the prophet Adam will be there and other prophets will be there and they will be asking those prophets, look, I knew about you. Can you help me out that, this day? 
They will be stacked up like sticks and they will have no place to stand on. Everybody will be trying to find some place to stand. They will be suffering that day so much that they will ask God, oh God, please relieve us of this suffering, just throw us in hell. Not realizing that the fire of hell will be a million times hotter than the place that they're standing. This will only be the beginning of the day of judgment. Dear brothers and sisters, if this is only the beginning of the judgment, let me just summarize to tell you what the end of the judgment. For those whose scales are light in good deeds, Their resting place inevitably will be the hellfire. Punishments that you cannot imagine. And you may say to, to me, well, it sounds like a dream. I don't believe that. Well, you don't believe that you're going to die. You can't even imagine that. You can't imagine the grave. You can't imagine while you were in your mother's womb. You can't imagine before that. Yet all those scenarios were realities for you to get here. And all of those are realities for you to leave here. And certainly, this issue of judgment is a matter of scripture. Every prophet of God told the people about this scenario. And all I'm doing to you, for you brothers and sisters is reminding you about this scenario. All of us are going to die. All of us are going to the grave. All of us are going to be judged, and all of us will wind up in one or two destinations. No one wants to be in a predicament. No one wants to go to jail, not even for a day. Certainly no one wants to go to jail for life. And even if you went to jail for life, what is it, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years in an air-conditioned prison watching cable TV, eating three meals a day of the taxpayer's dollars, playing basketball or rugby or whatever they do in jail? For the prison of hell, there won't be no TV. There won't be no three meals. There won't be no air conditioning. There will be the recompense of your deeds and your rejection of the Almighty. Now, I'm not the one to say that if you don't believe in God, I'm not the one to say if you're not a Muslim, I'm not the one to say if you're a Christian or a Jew or a Buddhist or a Hindu or whatever, I'm not the one to say who's going to hell and who's not because I don't have any guarantee myself. But I am only a warner to say to you, so certainly you're going to answer for what you did on this earth with the gifts that you were given. Don't be caught by surprise and don't be in a situation that you were warned, you were told, and on that day you deny and you lie and you say that you didn't know. Because in case you didn't realize it, if you didn't know before you came here, you know now. When you walked through that door, you didn't know that you were going to walk out of here responsible, that if you didn't know before you came, now you know. Now lie to yourself if you want to and dream about it. And keep this in mind. Each one of you only have a number of days or months or years before the reality of death comes to you. Some of us that's sitting here right now, a month from now, we may not be here. A year from now, we may not be here. Certainly, many of us, 10 years from now, will not be here. This presentation is to cement in your minds that true success in life 
has to do with understanding and making an evaluation of life itself. Make the proper evaluation. The Prophet ﷺ told us, think about your life before your death. Think about your youth before your old age. Think about the gifts of your wealth before your poverty. Think about the gifts that you were given. Think about this life, this opportunity. Think about your responsibility before you are called to account. True success in life is just like what the Boy Scouts said. What's the saying of the Boy Scouts? Who knows? What's their major, what the Boy Scouts say? What is their two words they always say? Huh? Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Now the Boy Scouts didn't mean be prepared to die. But it also means being prepared. Now how many people here would like to be completely prepared? Or some people would only like to be prepared to go to work tomorrow or on Monday. Every one of us, if we know where we're headed, would like to be prepared. Every one of us, if we're taking a trip, gonna pack the bags and try to have everything in that bag that we need. Isn't that true? It is the nature of human beings that if they know where they're headed, they want to be prepared. That's the nature of what we're talking about here tonight. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to summarize and wrap up my message to you by saying, part of success in life is making the correct decisions. And what helps us to make the right decisions is making the, having the right information. We are prov providing you with information from the Lord of the heavens and the earth, from a sacred scripture, which is the only scripture which is intact. Providing you and I with the information that will allow us to be prepared. And by being prepared, we can reform our lives now. We can rearrange things in our lives now. We can reconcile things with our conscience and we can reconcile things with our creator, with our God now. We can pay the debts that we owe. We can pay restitution that we owe. We can begin to do some worship. We can at least say, oh God, I thank you for life. Oh God, I ask you for strength. Oh God, I ask you for time. Oh God, I ask you for mercy. Oh God, I ask you for forgiveness. Oh God, give me the opportunity and I will reconstruct my life. I will reform myself in preparation for a day about which there is no doubt. Wow. <laughs> Guys, mm -mm. it's similar to the day of judgment in Christianity, yes. Maybe there will be sound of trumpets, you know. All I can say is that on that day, they are going to be judged by him. So let's do good. Let's do right. Let's behave the way God wants us to behave. And let's win source for God. It's very, very important. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smile and subscribe. But for more, like, share, and comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.